Next, we're going to spend some time testing our drawing tablet and pen to ensure that they're working well with Rebel. I recommend that you watch my reference video about how to draw on a tablet because that will go even more in depth into how to set up and use your tablet. For now, we can review some of the basics. Let's choose the oils acrylics category and then select the variant called round soft. I'll select black for my color and I'll choose a medium size brush. Under size and the brush properties, I'll enter a value of 25. Next, I'll use the navigator to zoom the canvas to 100% and I will make a brush stroke that begins with heavy pressure, and then I will gradually transition to using lighter pressure. This particular brush allows me to control the opacity of the paint using pen pressure. If the transition in opacity is too abrupt, we can smooth that out later by calibrating our pen pressure or by changing some of the brush properties. If I start the stroke with light pressure, you can see that I'm also able to vary my pressure to create thin and thick line widths. Depending on the gestures and the amount of pressure you use, you can paint, blend, fade the opacity, and vary the line width all with a single brush. I'll clear the canvas with the keyboard shortcut of delete. If your pen is not responding to pressure and you're just getting a solid line, that indicates your tablet is not working correctly. Every drawing tablet requires that you install a driver, so you want to make sure that is installed before attempting to use your tablet. If you're using a Wacom tablet, then you can just run a Google search for Wacom drivers and then follow the instructions on Wacom's website to install the driver. Another reason why you're not getting pen pressure is because you might be pressing too firmly, which makes the line appear solid. Or you might be pressing too lightly. So try pressing very firmly with the pen and then try pressing as lightly as you can, barely touching the pen on the tablet. If you are able to control pen pressure, but you're not able to control it very well, this is where it can be helpful to calibrate the pen pressure and the Wacom tablet properties. First, you'll wanna make sure that your tablet is selected under device. Then under tool, choose the pen you wish to program. You can program multiple pens independently of each other. I happen to be using the ProPen 1, so I'll make sure that is what I have selected. You'll also wanna make sure that under application, Rebel is selected. Unless, of course, you want your pressure calibration to apply globally to all applications. You may need to add Rebel to this list. If we look under Tip Feel, there is a slider that goes from soft to firm. We can test our current pressure setting by pressing down on the pen within the Wacom control panel. When I press down firmly, the pressure meter gradually builds up. When I press lightly with my pen, then the meter hardly registers at all. Adjust the Tip Feel until it complements your own personal touch. I tend to press down firmly when I draw, so I set the slider one notch toward firm. If you tend to press down lightly when you draw, then you'll want to set the tip feel toward soft. To evaluate how the current setting will affect your brush strokes, minimize the Wacom tablet properties and return to Rebel. I'll draw some test lines using light pressure that fades to heavy pressure with the round soft oils brush to get a feel for how the new pressure setting is affecting the strokes. If you don't like the pressure setting you chose, return to the Wacom tablet properties and try another setting. You can also set a custom pressure curve if the presets aren't working for you. Because I have Rebel selected as the target application, these pressure settings will only apply to Rebel. Alternatively, you can also calibrate the pressure sensitivity of individual brushes from within Rebel. So that's how to get your pen pressure working and calibrate the feel of your pen. Now let's move on to the basics of using your drawing tablet. As you're aware by now, your pen is controlling your mouse cursor. Though it works a bit differently, the pen essentially replaces the mouse. Although I prefer to paint with my pen and keep a mouse handy for other tasks. To perform a mouse click, you simply tap with your pen on the surface of your tablet. For example, I can click and drag on this scroll bar to browse for brushes, or I can click on a tool in the toolbox. If you want to perform a right click, you'll need to use a mouse or program that to one of your pen buttons. I'll switch back to the brush tool. There are some best practices for how to hold your pen and draw with it. I'm not going to go over all of those in this video, but I will give a quick overview and then link you to some reference videos you can watch to learn more. Whether I'm using a tablet that has a built-in screen or just a regular drawing tablet without a screen, I'm resting my hand on the tablet surface. Your hand is not going to create a mark on the canvas, so it's okay if it touches the tablet surface. That is unless multi-touch is enabled. I'm using my hand to anchor my pen so that when I'm tapping or drawing, I create some stability. 
I'll let my hand and fingers drag to create a bit of friction on the tablet surface, which slows my strokes, making them more stable. Drawing with a digital pen is very much like drawing with a traditional pen. You can use a lot of the same techniques. Some artists also like to use the pen like a paintbrush by holding it near the eraser end. If you were using an oil brush to paint, then it might feel more natural to paint this way rather than having the sensation that you're drawing. Just as well, having a large gesture space can also be very helpful because if you're using a very small tablet, you might find that it's difficult to draw straight lines and smooth curves. That's because your range of motion is severely limited when you're confined to a small drawing space. If you have a nice large area to draw on, then you can make large fluid gestures which translates to straighter lines and smoother curves. Those were the basics of using your drawing tablet. Next, let's move on to something that you're going to be doing often here in Rebel, and that is resizing your brush. I have the round soft oils brush selected, and obviously I can go to the properties and I could choose a brush size there. I can enter a numeric value, or there's a slider that I can drag to increase or decrease the brush size. If you keep an eye on the brush cursor, you can see that it updates to match the value you chose. I'm just using a black background so you can see the cursor more easily as I demonstrate. The second method for selecting a brush size is to choose a diameter that is relative to your canvas size. In this case, you're not really concerned about a specific brush size, you just know that you want a big, medium, or small brush. You could use the sliders in the properties, but a faster way to do it is to use a keyboard shortcut. Hold down Control and tap and drag your pen left or right on the canvas. That will create a circle that defines the diameter of your brush. In most cases, this visual cue is fairly accurate, but some properties like scatter or tilt may cause the brush stroke to exceed the radius you defined. This brush utilizes tilt, so I need to keep it upright to match the cursor. In addition to the circle visualization, there's also a status box that shows your size numerically. The brush diameter I choose will be the maximum size of my brush if I use maximum pen pressure. Now let's say you have a brush you want to be just a little bit larger or smaller. You can press the left or right bracket keys on your keyboard to change the brush size in 5% increments. You may be able to see that the cursor is growing along with the slider movement. I can even hold the key down. This lets me easily fine tune my brush. If your drawing tablet has a touch ring, you can program it to the bracket keys to resize your brush that way as well. Here's my preferred method for resizing the brush. Rather than using the control keyboard shortcut, you can program one of the buttons on your pen to activate control. For example, I have the Pro Pen selected in the Wacom Tablet Properties. And in the Pen tab, I have the button that's nearest the tip of the pen set to a modifier, which is set to Control. The other pen button is set to right click. So if I want to resize my brush, all I have to do is hold this button down and drag my pen. I can make a large brush, a small brush, and everything in between. Now let's talk more about how to vary the opacity of our brushes. I'll demonstrate on a gray canvas so you can see this more easily. I will select the airbrushes category and I will choose spray. If I paint with this brush, it gradually builds up the opacity based on how hard you press. If you press lightly, the paint will be thinner and more transparent. If you press harder, then the paint will be thicker and more opaque. We can control the opacity of a brush from the properties. Just like with the brush size, we can numerically enter an opacity level, let's say 50% and now the brush will paint at 50% opacity using maximum pressure. If we set the opacity to 2%, then the paint is not going to be as opaque when we make strokes, and it will take more effort to build them up to full opacity. There's also an opacity slider that we can drag or click on. Another way to change the opacity is to use the keyboard shortcuts of Control left bracket and Control right bracket. This will modify the opacity in 3% increments. I don't often change the opacity setting unless I find that a brush is a bit too strong or a bit too weak. Typically, I build up opacity gradually using overlapping strokes, so I usually set my opacity pretty low, let's say around 9%. Similar to how you used a keyboard shortcut to increase and decrease the size of your brush, you can also increase and decrease the opacity of your brush. Hold down Control, but this time drag up or down. The opacity of the cursor changes, which in turn defines the maximum opacity of this brush. Let's drag to set the opacity to around 20% and then lift the pen up. Now if I paint, I will get a stroke that is 20% opaque. Those were some of the basics of working with your drawing tablet. 